Hi, this is Gary Fong, and I'm going to teach you today how to connect different sound sources and video sources into one sequence onto Adobe Premiere Pro 6, uh, CS6, and it works the same with the other Adobe Premiere Pro. So in this example, I have done a sound file with the my uh, really good old standard battery case gone my zoom HD1 love this thing just for simple audio and then uh, this will record a sound file and this of course will do the video and so my goal today is to match the two up without having to go action and try to do my hand lining up with a sound and this this goes for if I had multiple cameras also the other thing too that is really nice about what I'm going to show you is that these files have a different format that can't be read directly onto your uh, Adobe, uh, your Apple Final Cut Pro X. It can be read on your Final Cut Pro, which I think is really nice, but I'm going to show you a way to take these unfriendly MTS files and turn them into some really friendly MOV files with just a couple clicks. I've saved tons and tons of time, and it took me tons of time to research how to do this, because nobody on YouTube shows you how to do this, so this is how. And uh, let's go to the computer right now. So the first thing that happens when you're shooting video with a Sony camera is that the files are very weird. When you go into uh, the Finder and look at the, this down here is the JVC cam, and um, you'll see a file called private, and there will be DCIM, there will be a whole bunch of other things. I erased it, uh, unfortunately, on this one, but what we're looking for is the word that says private. Now, a lot of, for example, Final Cut Pro, you can't import directly into Final, Qu uh, Final uh, Cut Pro through a JVD cam because it's a uh, different type of a file called an MTS file. And that is, uh, as it says here, private and not able to really be opened. But uh, with all Macintoshes, this is kind of cool, and I didn't know this until I tried it. You just double click on it, and what it'll do is it'll go to QuickTime Player, and it'll literally open up these uh, MTS files. So, I'll just look at the one that I just did most recently and I'll say open and what will happen is it'll actually literally open a brand new QuickTime file. Of course this one is just kind of a test and I haven't focused it yet but I just want to show you that it's got a QuickTime file. So all I do from the QuickTime file is I'm going to export and let's put it somewhere that you know I mean we don't really care about it but we'll just call it video clip export or something like that. Uh, QuickTime, it doesn't matter, whatever you want to call it. You can put it back on the same card, uh, whatever you want to do, but here I'm just going to put it there, and then what it'll do is it'll just go ahead and export, and then now we have ourselves, instead of this private weirdo thing, we have ourselves a very, very common MOV file, which will be very simple for Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere to use. So now let's go ahead and launch Adobe Premiere. And I've got my workspace all set up here. So this, basically, in this clip, what I've done is I've done a two-system shoot. Not two cameras, but one audio and one sound. And I want to pair them up together. And that's something that a lot of people, including myself, try to do on timelines and right down here. And I try to clap or say action and match up the sound. And that takes long, especially when you're using multiple cameras. So there's this program down here called Plural Eyes 3. And Plural Eyes is very, very cool because this simple, very, very simple interface will allow you to synchronize a gazillion different cameras or sound sources and get them ready to put into Adobe Premiere or Final Cut. So what I'll do here is, it's very simple, it says drag media files from a finder window to here. Now, it's very important when you drop a movie file, say .mov, into a into here, it has to be of the file camera type. This is called a bin. Or if it's going to be an audio recorder, like if it came from a Zoom audio recorder, you would want to drop it into 
audio recorder. This is something that you would think, oh, there's something wrong with the program because it's not importing. But that's basically what you want to do. So the first one I'll do is I'll do camera. And then let's go ahead and open up our finder window. And we'll go back to my Thunderbolt because I have a display ready for you. And we'll call this demo. And this is clip number one. Now this was straight out of QuickTime. And I've turned it into clip number one, which I took off of clip time, if you recall. I double clicked on the private uh, icon. Now I'm going to drag that into here. Now let's review. It's highlighted on camera one, so that means camera one, and I'm going to drop it into here. So that's that. And, whoops, let's go back to pluralize. So this you have, and you can see there's very, very faint sound because the bars don't even show, and that's because I was using a camera at quite a distance. So I had also nearby a zoom audio recorder, and we're going to definitely want that uh, zoom audio recorder to link up to the video. So let's go back to the finder window, and we'll go here. This is my zoom mp3, and you'll notice that I have audio recorder clicked. Now what happens if I have two cameras? Where do I put the second camera? You go down to this plus thing right here and it'll ask you do you want to add a bin for a camera or an audio recorder or pre-recorded music and the reason why it wants to know is because they're different formats. Camera might be MOV, uh, audio recorder might be M4P or something like that. So you definitely want to add the type that you have. So if it was a camera we would drop it into here. But since we don't have one I'll just for the sake of simplicity I'll just minus and take it out. But we do have an audio recorder and that was my zoom, my little handheld zoom. And I'm just going to drag that into here. Now, oh it says the wrong format for this bin. Now you should see right here it's MP3. So that means that I've done something wrong. I put it in camera 2 and I've literally uh, deleted the wrong camera the last time. So that's not a problem. It'll just take a second to fix. I'm going to click on audio recorder and I'm going to drop my zoom into here and now it'll take that and there's my sound file. Let's go back to camera 2 and we'll go over here and again that's that clip from the QuickTime MOV file that I'm going to drop into here and now you see that I've got a whole heck of a lot more sound than I do have on the video. And that's okay. I probably did some trimming of the QuickTime video before I got here. Now this is the part that's really fun. Go up to the sync menu and hit synchronize. Watch this. Boom! And now it is exactly lined up so that my sound sources are equal. I don't have to clap. I don't have to match the waveforms. I don't have to do all that. And just imagine if you had 16 cameras and four sound sources. What a nightmare that would be. That would take you all afternoon. Neat thing, this is a very simple situation, but neat thing with Pluralize is it happens in an instant, just like this. So I'll go File, Export, and I have a di uh, different export modes. It's all Final Cut, by the way, XMLs. So even Premiere Pro, so if you're Final Cut Pro X, you would just go like that. And if you want to create a multi clam cam clip if there were many cameras that would be cool because you have that all set to go um, and these are your other choices um, down here is what I use Final Cut Pro and it's Final Cut Pro XML for Premiere now XML is really a native format for Adobe uh, Apple Final Cut Pro X but it's very very friendly with our friend Adobe Premiere so let's go ahead and hit export now this is the weird thing. It will, and uh, it's kind of bulky, but you have to do a bunch of crap to try to rename these things. And uh, for me, it's just real simple to just know that at 1021, I made that one. So now I'll do a search under the finder for untitled dash one. I know this is kind of corny. Underscore FCP. And so this was uh, the one that was taken today at 1021 we want the XML file not the FCP XML file the XML file and I'll just copy that by doing uh, Apple C or just copy copy that and then I'll put it back into my source folder which is now in my Thunderbolt we'll just put that in the demo and then you can actually see that I've already put it in here uh, previously so um, <clears throat> So there it is. It's inside there. Okay, that's your XML file. Now we have to go to Premiere and import that. So that's real simple. File, import, like that. And we import that XML file. That's all we do. Just hit the import button. And then here it comes and boom.
So this is a little folder inside my projects thing. I'm going to double click on it and you'll see that there's uh, sync sequences here. Let's do this sync sequence and you'll see right here that, and I'll just close this out, if you listen, let's go Hi, this is Gary Fong and today I'm going to be talking about how to take your flash off now, camera, that put is it into wireless, this and it's menu driven, and uh, it works great. Let's take this uh, stereo one down too, and when you listen, you can barely hear a thing, and that is because the zoom is the sound. We've uh, taken the sound out of uh, clip one, and so, but what you're seeing here is watch the lips completely synced. Again, this is the zoom, and this is the clip.